Hydraulics inspections are an important way to make sure your hydraulic system is working and performing well. In addition to visual inspections that are part of a TA-1, you will test cylinder drift, cycle times, and more. Let's go through how to complete those additional tests. Before you get started though, check your operation and maintenance manual for proper safety procedures and always wear appropriate personal protective equipment. First, grab a timer, a tape measure, a ladder, and the service instructions for your specific machine. If you have a pressure gauge, grab it too. But if not, don't worry about it. Move your equipment to hard level ground and an open area. You need open space in each direction, including above. That means at least 25 meters plus the length of the machine in each direction, and 30 meters would be even better. Depending on your machine length, this could be up to 50 meters or more. This is because you'll be raising the boom and stick all the way up for one of the tests. You need a bucket for this test, and make sure it is empty before getting started. Put the hydraulic activation lever in the unlocked position. We are testing a CAT 323 hydraulic excavator, and the specifications may be different for your equipment. Talk to your CAT dealer to learn more about how to test your specific machine, and ask them about SIS 2.0, where you can find service instructions and measurement ranges. If any of your measurements are not within acceptable ranges, work with the technician to troubleshoot. Increase hydraulic oil temperature to 55 degrees Celsius, plus or minus five degrees. To measure the boom cylinder head end, position the linkage the way you see it here. Measure the cylinder length from pen to pen and record that number somewhere. You may need a ladder and another person to help, depending on how big your equipment is. If you don't feel safe or don't have a ladder, please skip this test. To more easily measure by yourself, Here's a more practical approach. Make sure the linkage is still positioned as shown before. First, make sure you're standing on the ground or a ladder or step stool. Then measure a distance you can reach, such as 10 centimeters or inches, and then make a mark on the chrome. Shift to neutral, engage the parking brake, and turn the engine off. Wait three minutes and measure again, noting how much the length to the mark has shifted. For example, if the distance from the end to the mark is now 11 centimeters or inches, you know that's a one centimeter or inch drift. And the drift you measure on your own equipment is what you will use to check against the specs. Now using the same procedure, measure the bucket cylinder rod end by positioning the equipment as shown. Finally, measure the stick cylinder head end by positioning the linkage like this. Make sure you're waiting three to five minutes after turning off the engine to take the measurements. Reference the test instructions for the timing for each measurement. Testing cylinder cycle times can help detect internal cylinder leakage, issues with main pump flow, and signs of other potential system issues. Make sure the hydraulic temperature is still above 50 degrees Celsius. Set the engine speed dial to maximum, which is either seven or 10, depending on your machine. Turn off automatic engine control shift to neutral, engage the parking brake, and fully retract in the bucket. Now, time how long it takes to fully extend the bucket at the fastest speed. Repeat the test, measuring how long it takes to fully retract the bucket from that extended position. Now, move your linkage to test boom cylinder cycle times. Double check that you have enough space, and then measure the boom extension at full speed, and measure the boom retraction time Please be aware that hitting the ground with a lift arm can be dangerous, so be careful. Finally, measure the stick cylinder extension and retraction times. This test is for checking machine speed and final drive motor performance. This test will be easiest if you grab some cones or blocks to mark your travel distances. Place them to the side so that you can see them, but not hit them while traveling. Put the first cone next to the front of your track so that you know where you started. Measure five meters from that point and place another cone. Finally, put a cone 25 meters away from your first cone. Make sure the hydraulic oil temperature is still at least 50 degrees Celsius. Position your bucket one half to a full meter off the ground. Set engine speed to seven or 10 and turn off automatic engine control. Now. Place the travel speed control in high position and operate forward. The first five meters should give your equipment time to reach full speed. So don't start the timer until you reach the second cone. 
and stop timing once you reach the final cone. Go back to the starting point and repeat the test with travel speed control on low position. Now you'll reverse at full speed to check that travel time too. Reposition your cones as needed so that you have space to do the test in reverse. Swing your cab around to prepare to reverse your machine. Make sure the hydraulic oil is still in range and start the reverse test at high speed. Again, don't start the timer until five meters in and stop the timer at the final cone. Repeat the reverse travel test at low speed. Note that if you're in a tighter space, you can still do the test. First, raise one track and mark one of its shoes so that you can keep track of revolutions. Put the machine in power mode, set the engine speed to seven or 10, and turn automatic engine control off. Time how long it takes to complete three revolutions at high speed for the raised track. Repeat the test at high speed and reverse, and then switch to low speed and do both forward and reverse again. And then repeat that entire test after you lift the other track. Refer to SIS 2.0 for the speed variations that are acceptable for your equipment. This tests how much pressure the pumps are delivering to the system. If the pressure is too high, components could get damaged. And if it's too low, you're not getting optimal performance. Check hydraulic oil temperature, set the engine speed dial to seven on this machine, and shut off automatic engine control. Make sure you're in power mode and stall out your implements to reach max pressure. Check the pressure values for both pumps on the monitor or on your manual gauge. You might need to change the stalled implement function to read the value for the other pump. Now that you've completed those tests, you will check your pilot relief valve, if equipped, and swing cycle time. Refer to SIS 2.0 instructions for those tests. And remember, work with the technician to troubleshoot any values that are out of range. To check diagnostic codes, turn on your equipment and press the application menu icon. Tap on setting, then service, and finally, diagnostics. This is where you see active and logged diagnostic codes, as well as active and logged event codes. If you see an active code, you can press save to move it to logged codes. And if you scroll to the bottom of your logged codes list, you can clear all of them out. For more information and support, contact your CAT dealer and always check your operation and maintenance manual for specific instruction and safety procedures.